Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Jatai International. Welcome to Jatai Academy. Welcome to Facebook Live. It is Tuesday, March. I think it's the 19th, 2019. It is 9 o'clock Central Time, meaning it is 10 o'clock on the East Coast and, of course, 7 o'clock on the West Coast. Welcome into everybody. And here we are again with another entry in the history, the uh, track record, the reputation that we have here at Jatai for posting great information for you live on the web. Uh, JATAI.net, that's the website. If you're not a member, subscriber to Jatai Academy, at the end of this broadcast, I encourage you to go to uh, Jatai.net, sign up. Uh, video content, information sent to you on an ongoing and regular basis. Tons of great stuff that you've come to know and rely on us for. And we hope that tonight, is going to be no exception to that. The subject matter for tonight is professional consultation skills, a subject um, that I take very seriously, a near and dear to me, and I think important to anyone and everyone who deals with clients every day in the shop. So um, let's get into it, let's get started. Before we go there though, um, upcoming shows and events and things like that. Uh, the Mid-Atlantic Show, March 31 through April 1, same weekend, ABS, America's Beauty Show in Chicago. Uh, April 14, 15 is the Spring Style Show, San Jose, one of the bigger, better events on the West Coast every year. Uh, please come find us, Jatai International, we'll have a booth there, we'll have show specials, deals and great stuff. We also have our ongoing regular monthly specials, jatai.net on the web. Um, for the month of March, we've got texturizing razor blades on sale, 25% uh, off. We've got a bonus pack, uh, which is the 12% uh, off the standard three pack price. We've got the rapid blades value pack, 15% off. That's the three pack of the new R type blade if you haven't tried it for uh, the standard feather uh, uh, handle, the freestyle handle. Um, and blade glide, uh, two ounce part of that value pack. That is a deal good through the end of April. Uh, also, um, $3 off on the Jatai Pin Teasing Comb. Those of you that are more than just barbering, but those of you that are uh, working with long hair, updo, fancy hair, party styles. You know, we're gonna be heading into graduation season. We're gonna be heading into wedding season. And the uh, Pin Teasing Comb is a great, great item in that category. Another original, innovative item, the kind of things you've come to rely on uh, your friends at Jatai for. And 15% off switchblade shears and blades through the end of April is another great one. I love my switchblades, everybody does. Shout out CJ Andrews from up in East Aurora, New York, down in sunny Florida. Hello, my friend, good to see you there. And Miguel Santis, who's outside of Houston, Texas. Uh, another good friend of mine, always got Rocker Steve. Uh, so some of the regular crew is showing up. Uh, glad to have you here. Consultation skills, here's the deal, guys. I cannot overemphasize how important good consultation skills are to success behind the chair. You know, back in my older, younger days, way back when, when I worked with the chain, we used to track something called redo rate. Redo rate was a uh, tracking of any time any customer ever came back for any kind of an adjustment. My sideburns, they're not even. I wanted it shorter. It's too short. I want it longer. I mean, there's so many reasons why people would come back into the shop. But one of the things we found, based on the data we accumulated, based on the knowledge and the information we had from the redo book, because anytime anybody ever came back, we wrote it down. And we went back and we analyzed this stuff. And the bottom line, most of the time, as much as 90% of the time, when a customer left the shop dissatisfied or unhappy in some way, shape, or form, when we came back and looked at things, that problem could be traced back to communication and consultation. It wasn't that we weren't good hair cutters. It wasn't that our people weren't taking good care of people. It's that there was a misunderstanding or a miscommunication or a discommunication or a disconnect of some kind between what the customer wanted and what the service provider understood the customer wanted. So it's that big an issue uh, with respect to redo rates. So, um, I've got a client, uh, that would be uh, Logan. Everybody say hello to Logan. Hello. Logan says hello. Uh, Logan's gonna sit in the chair and play client for some of the role playing we're gonna do. I got a whole 
list of notes here. This one really isn't a program like me cutting a haircut. This is me sharing a whole bunch of information and I wanna be thorough and I wanna be accurate and I wanna be complete. Uh, so I'm gonna reference the notes along the way as we go. Uh, please note, as I'm having a haircut consultation with Logan, or role playing or mocking through some of these things, Logan had a haircut yesterday. Okay, so when I say how long has it been since you had a haircut, Logan's not gonna say yesterday. He's not gonna say that, okay? He's gonna play along like he needs a haircut because for this, I needed a body. It's spring break, he's home, he's in the house, I'm feeding him, he's earning the food. He's graduating from college in just a few short weeks. It's his last spring break and what better way to spend it than working with dad. So we're down here at the shop. You guys know the shop. I've shot so many of the lives here and so many of my other videos for Jatai and for Feather right here in this environment, Mike's Barbershop, so we're happy to be here today to use this space. So I want to start out with some rules related to consultation. And some of these are some of my own stuff, you know, but what's really my own stuff? Um, do we make anything up or do we learn from each other in this business? Some of this is well-established best practices in the business. I love best practices. It's those things that we really should be doing to get the outcomes we really want to get. So one of my favorite ones for starters is never have a consultation with tools in your hand. Never have a scissor and a comb in your hand talking to a client and having a conversation about, so what are we going to do? As soon as you pick up the tools, you're sending a message. The message of having tools in your hands is, I am ready to work. I am getting into it. It's time to get going. We haven't even talked yet. I think it sends a very strong message if the tools are on the counter and the hands are empty and we're looking at a client saying, talk to me about what we're going to do to have that consultation and conversation. So big rule number one is when you are having a consultation, empty hands, nothing in your hands. Rule number two, and I got this one a long time ago, and I love this rule. I'm gonna turn the chair and I hope you can see. But rule number two is, anytime you're ever having a consultation with a client, one of your butt cheeks should be on the counter or the sink. Now our counters are high, my sink is low, I'm short, sink works. But the rule is, anytime you're having a consultation with a client, one of your butt cheeks should be on the counter or the sink. This is what's happening right now. Look what's happening right now. I am not talking to the mirror, I'm talking to the Logan, eye to eye, over here, eye to eye and face to face. This is exactly the opposite of this behavior. Were I to be standing here, behind the chair, behind the client, essentially talking to the back of his head, looking at the client in the mirror. So, what are we gonna do for you today, looking in the mirror like that? See, if you've been in the business five minutes, you think that's normal behavior, standing behind somebody and talking to the them over there in the mirror. But that's not normal behavior. That's weird beauty industry behavior. Real people talk to real people looking at them like this, straight on, eye to eye. Now, I wouldn't stand out here, you know, away from the counter, so my best place to stand, client facing the mirror, so they can see the mirror and think about and see themselves and be aware of what they're looking like and what they're talking about. With me, on this side, one cheek on the sink, talk to me about your hair. Talk to me about your hair. Well, I'm here for a haircut. Okay, there you go, he's here for a haircut. So, look at them eye to eye, look at each other face to face. Two big tips for starters. Next on the list, let's take a look at my two favorite haircut consultation questions. Now, I'm gonna break my rule, I'm not picking up my tools, but I am gonna turn the chair so that he's facing the camera instead of facing the mirror with me facing him. But we're going to stand here, we're going to talk like this. This works, you guys can see us, we're on the camera. Two favorite haircut consultation questions when dealing with our male clients. Listen carefully to how they work. We're going to do them two times because we're going to talk about two different potential answering scenarios on these. And we practice this a little bit, so this should come off as smooth and professional. It may come off as amateur and bumbling, but we won't know until we get into it. So. It's up to you to see what we deliver. Are you ready? Question number one. How long has it been since you had a haircut? 
month. That's question number one. How long has it been since you had a haircut? You heard the answer, we're gonna do it again. How long has it been since you had a haircut? So no, no, no. Oh. same answer as last time. Oh, okay. We're not changing yet. How long has it been since you had a haircut? Month. One question, one answer. His answer was one word. Now, question number two. Is that normal for you? Yeah. Okay, how long has it been since you had a haircut? Is that normal for you? I think these are great guy consultation questions because how long has it been since you had a haircut gives us an idea of interval. Human hair, half an inch a month. Under all circumstances, with the with only exception being severe malnutrition, dietary, real serious dietary challenges, like somebody with an eating disorder, or somebody who's critically ill, human hair grows half an inch a month. How long has it been since your last haircut? Month. And is that normal for you? Yeah. Now, great answers. Now I know what a month ago looks like based on any haircut I look at. I know what that haircut looked like a month ago. I'm a professional. The important thing to key in on here was one word answers. If you ask consultation questions and you get one word answers, the rule is don't ask more than three questions. We're gonna do it again, same answers. Don't, don't move on to the next thing yet. Yep. How long has it been since you had a haircut? Month. Is that normal for you? Yeah. Same as last time? Sure. Done. That's it, same as last time, done. Now, you gotta read the client. You gotta take feedback from the client. If you say to the client, how long has it been since your last haircut? And he says, so, no, 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 same answer. <laughs> Don't go to the new stuff yet. Okay. That's the other material, we're All sticking right. with this. How long has it been since you had a haircut? Month. Is that normal for you? Yeah. Same as last time? Sure. He doesn't wanna talk. This guy's giving you short, quick, simple, one word answers. If you ask a fourth question, so are you thinking you want it a little longer on the top and shorter on the sides? Or what did you have in mind for this haircut? His next thing out of his mouth is gonna be something along the lines of, dude, I'm a tax accountant, you're a barber, I don't know. They're gonna to start to question you and then he's gonna say something like, how long have you been cutting hair? They're gonna to start to question your skills and your qualifications. You gotta read the client. Now the flip side of that, instead of getting one word answers, you end up with something like this. Same two questions. How long has it been since you had a haircut? So if it's March 19th right now, I know I went back to school for the spring semester at the end of January, but I also had just gotten a haircut like a couple weeks before then for an event, so I, I kind of had a different haircut than normal last time, so uh, it's, I think it's been like maybe six weeks or so. I mean, I'm not really sure exactly. Once he starts talking, stop! Once he starts talking, he's not gonna shut up. And that's, clients are really like that. And then you ask your second question. Is that interval normal for you? So it's it's a little more than usual because I've been out of town. I mean, I did grow out my hair for like three years that one time, so that was kind of a little bit longer than usual. But when I was younger, I was getting them every like four to six weeks. So it's, it really kind of depends on the Absolutely, person. this is exactly the kind of answers. Now, the client that answers like that, He's got a story to tell and he wants to tell it. Now I stopped him because he's my <laughs> kid and I'm tired of listening to him. However, with a real client, let him go. Let him talk. If you're quiet, they'll tell you everything you need and everything you want to know in the context of this little conversation. Let him go, let him tell his stories, listen carefully to the information and pay attention. So the two questions, how long has it been since you had a haircut? Is that normal for you? That sets up interval and expectations. It also gives you a lot of insight into the, cl the client, how they view and utilize a haircutting and a haircut service experience. So those are my two favorites. Listen to the answers. Short, simple answers, just get busy cutting. Long stories, pay attention so you can take care of the client. Now you heard me say, same as last time, and you heard him say, yeah, I don't think same as last time is so bad, but I think you wanna be careful about using same as last time. We're a classic barber shop. We've been here since 1967, and we've got guys that have been coming in here to get a haircut since I was like in diapers. These guys don't wanna talk about their haircuts. They literally get same as last time, and that's okay. But you also don't wanna be remiss in failing to offer customers new and different and fresh and creative because when they survey clients and they ask clients, hey, why'd you stop going to Ivan or why'd you stop going to that shop? One of the most common answers we hear is, 
They always did the same thing. They never gave me options and choices and new. And people want options and choices and new and fresh. So that's where we start talking about trend. And when we start talking about trend, let's look at Logan's haircut. Let's talk about what's going on in Logan's haircut. Let's talk about trend. If you look at what Logan's got going on, one side is tapered high with a hard part. The top is long, it's undercut on the opposite side, and it's tapered through the neckline. Relatively new, recent, fresh haircut. And sometimes clients will ask you, what's new? Now, what's new is not this haircut. This haircut's a compilation of six or seven things. But clients will want to know that you know. There are clients that will want new and trendy. They will bring you pictures and say, make me look like this. And they will be modern, trendy, and up-to-date haircuts. Other clients might ask for new, but not really want it. Sometimes they just want to know that you know. Hey, I want to know that my hair guy or hair girl is up to date and, and, and educated and well informed and they don't really want new. They'll show you showing pictures of new and they don't want it. And you'll end up with same as last time. And it's not a bad thing if the client's happy with it. But also recognize that sometimes clients want what I call new adaptation. An adaptation of what is trendy or what's interesting or new going on out there. So a good example of that might be what's really new. What's really new right now in men's hair is longer top length. And that's one of the things he's got going on. I've got that going on. You guys that know me know that the amount of hair on the top, and I just had this cut today, the amount of hair on the top of my head is an insane amount of hair for me. So the adaptation of trend might be, in this case, a little bit of undercut. One side's undercut, but one side's not. It might be having a little bit of top length. It might be that hard part, and arguably maybe the hard part's no longer even new anymore, but it depends where you live. and depends on how those trends are moving through your relative communities. But having the ability to talk trend, as well as having the ability very specifically to adapt trend in ways that can be accessible to clients who may not be particularly trendy, I think is an important aspect of consultation. So trend adaptation, I think, uh, is really important. Um, now, let's get into the specifics of some hair cutting. One area where I think a lot of hair cutters get into some challenges is in the use of snap-on attachment guides or guards. You know, how do you want your hair cut? And the guy says, Shorter. Say? Shorter. And he says, give me a... Three. Yeah, give me a three. Well, give me a three is a very specific number. But somebody says short. Now, I love short. Let's talk about short for a minute. Guy says, how do you want your hair cut? Shorter. Shorter. Okay. Here's my question. Love this consultation question. Listen carefully. Do you want to see scalp through it? No. Okay. Good question. He answered right away. He knew what I meant and he knew what he did or didn't want. Do you want to see scalp? Now, let's keep in mind a three can play out very differently on different people. Think about a number one buzz cut. If you do a number one buzz cut on a little Latino boy, it's gonna look like a beautiful number one buzz cut. But if you do that exact same number one buzz cut on a little blonde boy, he's gonna look bald. You're gonna rub his head, you're gonna go, I feel hair but I don't see hair because that exact same number one is going to look and read very differently. You have to factor in the variables of density of hair, texture of hair, color of hair, and contrast relative to skin tone. You got a client who's dark complected with dark hair, I can peel him down to a number one, I'm not going to see scalp. But if you've got a pale client with lighter hair, imagine his hair was many shades lighter on a lighter skinned client, you zip a one on him, he's got nothing left. So I think cutting by the numbers can be iffy and dangerous, and I think one of the best ways to qualify that is that do you want to see scalp through it question. I think that really helps uh, in, in a big way. Uh, so let's see what else we have here. Um, one of the great questions, and we now get into some of the product category of consultation. I believe in talking about product early and often. I believe about talking in pro talking about products during the consultation process. Do you use product in your hair? Yeah. What do you use? Gel. Gel. Okay. And uh, do you use anything else besides gel? Just gel. Shampoo in the shower, condition in the shower, mm -hmm. and just gel. Okay. Um, are you? How much time are you willing to put in on your hair? Here's a great question. How much time are you willing to put in on your hair? I'm willing to put in product, but I don't really want to mess with my hair. 
So. Okay, here you go. I'm willing to put in product, but I don't want to mess with a hair dryer. Great answers, very indicative of the amount of commitment he's got going on in his hair. If you want your hair to look like mine, meaning standing up off the top of your head, you're going to have to use product, and you're going to have to use heat, and you're going to have to use more than one product. I blow it dry with gel, and then I put a firmer hold or a paste or a texture product on it after it's dry. That's time, that's commitment, that's involvement. And here's the deal. If you talk about that up front, you're not going to sell somebody into or recommend or suggest somebody into a haircut that's not going to work for them. Not because it wasn't a great haircut, not because it wasn't appropriate for their hair type and texture, but because A, either they couldn't work with it, they lack the skills and the products, or they wouldn't work with it. I got a blow dryer and I got a gel, but I'm not going to use it. So getting a product conversation into the consultation can be very, very valuable early, early on. So there's no unrealistic expectations, everybody's happy. And by the way, if we talk about product, you know, Logan, I noticed you got the little goatee thing going on. This is Jatai Beard and Mustache Softener Controls and Smooths. This is something you should be using a small amount of in your beard, in your goatee, every single day, out of the shower, dry yourself off. On the days when you're shaving, okay, fine. If you're not shaving, like today you didn't shave, but no problem, you're still gonna put this in there. Um, lightweight, fragrance-free, uh, a little tube like this goes a long, long way. You'll love the product. If we talk about it during the consultation, when we get up front to the cash register later and I suggest or recommend it, I'm not coming out of the blue. I'm not coming out of left field with something and he's not going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are we talking about this? What are you talking about? How come this is on the agenda? Exactly. We're going to get in on it early. We're going to talk product early. We're going to talk about what he's willing to do in terms of work, what tools is he willing to use, and what products might be appropriate under the circumstances. Um, next thing I want to talk about, language, when we're talking with male clients. Do you want your hair over the ear? No. No. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Over the ear is one of my favorite examples of how language can get you in trouble. Is over the ear over the ear or is over the ear over the ear? Do you want your hair covering your ears or do you want your hair cut out around the ear? Out around the ear. There you go. Clear answer, simple question. Watch your language. Another great one. When we talk about texture and texturizing or volume in the hair. Volume. What is volume? It's how big it is. How big it is. Fullness. Okay. What do most guys think volume is? The amount of noise coming out of the radio, right? I can't hear my hair. What are you talking about when you're talking about volume? Guy language is extraordinarily important. Do you want your hair thin? No. No guy wants thin hair. God thins hair. Professional beauty and barber individuals do not thin hair. Language becomes extraordinarily important. And guy language is gonna be very different than general language for our female clients. So those are some things, good examples of things to be conscious of or think about as we go. Um, back it up just a little bit because I skipped this one but I did want to come back to it. Uh, a couple things early on in the consultation. One of my great questions I like to ask Especially with a new client, never seen him before, I don't know this guy, wandered in off the street, I know nothing about him. How'd you hear about me? Sign on the window. Ah, sign on the window, walk by, okay. Could be sign on the window, could be I saw, you know, I'm in the neighborhood. Could be my buddy Mike referred me. You know, birds of a feather flock together. Sometimes if you know who referred somebody, you may get some insight ahead of time. Don't make assumptions about people, but it may provide a little bit of insight into the client you're getting and who you're and it's also good to know and understand your marketing and the consultation, asking the question, how'd you hear about me? Sign in the window. Same answer as last time. That lets you know if your marketing is working. If you've got coupons out there, everybody's coming in and nobody saw the coupon. If you've got a billboard by the highway and everybody says, ah, my friend Mike sent me and nobody says, I saw your billboard, your billboard's not working. So that feedback can be very, very valuable on the quality of some of your marketing and some of the things you're doing out there. Um, one thing I want to suggest, you know, um, I'm going to run up front for a minute. I don't think we have one here. No, we don't have one here. I was checking the magazine rack. We got car magazines. We got hunting magazines. We got cigar magazines. We got gun magazines. We got all kinds of interesting magazines. We don't have magazines with pictures of guy hair. Um, that may be more of a salon thing than a classic barbershop thing, but today, a great suggestion is to build a consultation Instagram. 
not your regular Instagram if you've got a personal page, and not your business Instagram if you're promoting your business and using it to generate clients and things like that. But create a what I call a lookbook Instagram. Create an Instagram page in which you go around on Instagram and you regram and you copy and you post pictures. They can be your haircuts, they can be other professionals' haircuts, but cool haircuts. So you've got an Instagram, and maybe you've got a dedicated tablet in the shop, or maybe you just use your phone, but having that extra Instagram, and the magic number seems to be 100 pictures. Now you know Instagram is three wide, it's going to be 33 down, three times 33 is 99, about 100 pictures is a really good, basically stocked Instagram for consultation purposes. Have that Instagram set up, add fresh content when new things are happening, delete old pictures that are getting stale, but keep that Instagram at about 100 photos that you can use to say to somebody, here, flip through here and see if there's anything in there that you like or that uh, is consistent with the kind of thing you're looking for. See, he's pretending to flip because he doesn't, I don't have a phone. That's good acting. All right, but use that Instagram as a powerful, powerful consultation tool. It's cheaper than any lookbook. It's instantly updatable all the time, and it doesn't all have to be your haircuts. It can be things that inspire you, things that you like, and keep in mind, if this is what you're showing clients, clients will gravitate towards the things that you show and offer, and you can kind of steer your customer base in a particular direction using an Instagram, a consultation Instagram uh, in that way. Another quick thing to mention, not necessarily barbershop specific, but if you are performing chemical services, you know you are supposed to be doing a patch test. You know you're supposed to be testing for allergies. Also be asking, hey, do you have any allergies related to cosmetic or toiletry items that I should know about? Because man, you put an aftershave on somebody and then you find out, that, oh, 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 I'm allergic. Now you got a problem. You should be asking, that should be coming up as part of the consultation. Now, I got two more questions I want to throw in here that I think can be very, very valuable in consultations. And which one you ask, I think, is reflective of maybe um, where you're coming from with clients. I like one question better than the other. Um, and we didn't practice these, so I'm going to spring it on him, and we're going to see what he comes up with. We're going to see where it goes. I think he's up to the task. Ask a client during a consultation, hey, tell me about the best haircut you've ever had. Well, you cut it. Uh, <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> it was, it was uh, shorter on the back and sides, but uh, a little longer on the top, but not this long. What was it about that haircut that really made it the best haircut you ever had? It was low maintenance. I was able to just get out of the shower and pretty much did what I wanted. Here we go. He was able to cite the example, stood out in his mind, and what was it that he liked? Low maintenance, all right? This tells me I got a client who's interested. He told me, I'll put gel in, but I don't want to mess with a blow dryer. Now he's referencing his best haircut experience was something that worked for him. It was short, it was simple, and it was low maintenance. I now know what he considers important. The flip side question, and I don't ask this one too often, but the other side of it is, it's avoiding the bear trap. You ever had a really bad haircut? No. That's because I cut your hair. That's the important answer. Okay, now pretend like you're not my kid. Pretend like somebody else has been cutting your hair. And pretend like you've had a bad haircut. Okay? It'll be impossible for you to really pretend this because you have no idea what that's like because you truly never had that experience. But have you ever had a bad haircut? Oh, yeah. Tell me what was bad about it. What stood out in your mind? What was the negative aspect of that experience? He's spitballing here totally because he's never had the experience. Let's see what he came up with. I gave him this little pause to think a little bit so he can concoct a fabulous story. We're going to see just how creative he is. Have you ever had a bad haircut? Summer camp when I was 13, I accidentally cut off a little bit of my hair with a nail clipper. Um, and it just kind of made the whole hairline all messed up. So that's a true story, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So his worst haircut experience was self-inflicted. As a beauty barber professional, that means I'm probably going to be pretty successful with this client, with this haircut. I know we got a bunch of people on here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this program. You know, Jatai International and Jatai Academy really takes a lot of pride in providing you guys with the best content we possibly can, both in these live programs as well as in your email. J-A-T-A-I.net on the web is where you find Jatai Academy. Please go there. Please sign up and you'll receive our emails on a daily basis. 
We're always offering up great content from me, a whole bunch of other, a great team of other beauty and barber professionals. Remember, we've got the shows coming up, ABS in Chicago. We've got Spring Style Show San Jose coming up in April 14, 15. The Mid-Atlantic Show is going to be March 31 through 4-1. That's the same weekend as Chicago. And there's a host of specials available on the Jitai website. Uh, I know there's a little bit of a lag time between when we're talking and what's actually posting up here, but I do want to give you guys a moment. Has anybody got any questions related to consultation? Does anybody out there listening have some good suggestions regarding consultation? You know, the wonderful thing about this with your ability to comment is this can be an interactive program, so we always welcome anybody that's got something they want to toss in there. I think that's my friend Rebecca Harris saying hello tonight. Nice to see you here, Rebecca. I'll probably see you tomorrow as well. Uh, on our meetup, on our weekly meetup. Uh, will you rock talk soon? Thank you, CJ. Good to see you, my friend. I hope Florida trip was your Florida trip was an enjoyable experience. Anybody else while we're just um, wrapping up the last few minutes here? If you got something, share it here or share it in the comments. The folks at Jatai are really good about going through the comments. I know that they will set this up for rebroadcast. They'll probably download the video and save it and share it elsewhere. Uh, but they're really good about going through the comments for people who watch on replay, answering questions. I will flip through them as well if anybody has any um, anything else going on. We're happy to help you with it. Uh, hope you guys had a nice evening and um, we're in the middle of March here. The weather is starting to turn the corner. Things are getting warmer. Things are getting nicer. Uh, and I appreciate you coming in and spending a little bit of your Tuesday night with us here at Jatai. Uh, appreciate you. Thank you very much. Logan, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Of course. You, you did a fabulous job um, in spite of the limited amount of practice we had talking about this over dinner tonight. Uh, before we got ready to get going. So thank you all. Safe travels. Enjoy. What do we got there? I can't see it from well, here. First, say hi to Angie and Keith. What's that? Angie and Keith. Angie and Keith. Hi, Angie. Hi, Keith. Uh, okay. CJ said don't take too long on the consult. Don't take too long on the consult. Absolutely. This was 30 minutes. 30 minute consultations. You're not going to make any money. Keep it simple. Keep it brief. Keep it short. I like it. And Jay said the worst thing to hear when you ask how could you, how would you like your haircut? And the client says, you your haircut. Is it the worst thing to hear? You know what? I built a career on regular haircuts. I like them. I'm good at them. They're quick and easy. They make me happy. And they make some clients happy too. You know, I get a lot of grief sometimes from people asking, why do I not post pictures of my haircuts on my Instagram? And there's a couple of reasons. Number one, I use my Instagram to feature your work, to feature the work of good, talented people doing amazing work that inspires me, that, that entertains me, and that educates me. And I like sharing that stuff. And the other thing is, you know what? You don't want to see a bunch of my clients. Quite frankly, I'm cutting your daddy, your uncle, your grandpa, your grandpa's brother. Um, I'm cutting ordinary classic tapered haircuts on ordinary folk. Uh, they're not sexy and exciting, but you know what? They're the heart of our business and they pay the bills. Missing. Um, Jay then says, then you follow up with short, medium, or just a trim, and the reply is regular haircut. Regular that's haircut. Cool. Yep, absolutely. What does that mean? Yep, that's what you're getting, a regular haircut. And we'll give you a regular haircut all the time. Thanks for your participation. Thank you for your contributions. Y'all have a great night. We'll see you again at Jatai Academy. Visit us, J-A-T-A-I dot net, on the web. Have a good night, all. Bye-bye.